If you're a regular listener to this podcast, you're probably expecting my regular history behind the news that I normally do, but this is not that. So I've noticed as I travel and I visit churches that our churches just, they don't know our own Christian history. So I'm going to be releasing some bonus episodes this summer, Missionary Stories. So this is really designed to be something you and your kids can download and listen to in the car while you're driving around this summer. I want it to be great for both kids and parents. I'm still going to be doing my weekly Thursday podcast and I will still cover the history and the background behind the stories that are in our news. So today I'm going to be starting with the story of one of our fathers of modern missionary, Hudson Taylor. It was May 22nd, 1883 in Yorkshire, England. Just a little bit about what was happening in 1883. Canada was founded just 16 years before this date. Sir John A. Macdonald was our Prime Minister. England had the first electric railway open that year and Victoria was the Queen of England. Into this world, Hudson was born to James and Amelia. His father, James, was a chemist and a lay pastor. Before Hudson was even born, his parents prayed that he would grow up to be a missionary in China. As a child, Hudson and his sister, they would sit at the table and their parents would study the Bible. And right from the beginning, Hudson's parents wanted him to know about God. As a little kid, Hudson was sick a lot. In fact, he was so sick he could not go to school with the other kids. So he had to stay home and be homeschooled. Because he was not able to run around and play like the other kids, he learned to love to read. What he hated was night, because then it was too dark to read. One night, Hudson had an idea. When his mom was not looking, he took a handful of candles and put them into his pocket. He had the perfect plan. That night, when it got too dark to read, he would light a candle. It was a great plan, but then it ran into a problem. That night, a man came to visit them, and the man was sitting next to the fire. The man took Hudson, and Hudson had to sit on his lap next to the fire. Hudson could feel the candles heating up and melting in his pocket. By the time he finally got away and ran up to his room, the candles had melted and ruined his pants. When Hudson was 13, he stopped school and began to work with his father. He worked at a pharmacy mixing medicine. Hudson cared about one thing, making lots of money and becoming rich and powerful. His family would still sit at the table and talk about the Bible, but Hudson stopped paying attention. He wasn't interested in the Bible at all or God. Church was boring. God was boring. The Bible was boring. Plus, he already knew it all anyway. Throughout Hudson's teen years, his heart grew colder and harder. Hudson's mom began praying earnestly for her son. One day, as she was out, she stopped what she was doing and started praying. She would not stop praying until she felt God tell her to stop. She prayed and she prayed. Hudson wasn't at work that day. He was home alone. He was, at this point, 16 years old. He was bored, and so he went into his father's office to look for something to read. He had read every book in the study. Then he accidentally tipped over a basket and knocked out some tracks. And he thought, hmm, these usually start with stories to get people's attention and then start preaching. I'll read the stories and then I'll throw it away when it gets to the Bible part. Hudson took the paper into the barn, got comfortable, and started to read. Then he read the words, the finished work of Christ. Suddenly he remembered the words of Jesus. It is finished. He could see Jesus on the cross, dying for him. Jesus had done everything. He'd done all that was needed to be done. Jesus had finished it. All he asked from Hudson was to receive it. Hudson fell on his face before God right there in the barn. He cried out to God and received him. At that moment, Hudson's mother felt a wave of happiness flow over her, and she knew Hudson had just become a Christian. She left, and she headed home. As she got home, Hudson opened the door, excited to tell her, but she already knew her prayers had been answered. Hudson changed that day. He was happy, and he had a drive to tell everybody about Jesus. On Sundays after church, he would go door to door and visit every home that was not in church and tell them about Jesus. This was often met with cursing and hitting. People didn't like his boldness at all. 
One day Hudson was praying and he told God he would do anything God asked him to do. And he heard God say, go to China. A few days later, Hudson was visiting a pastor and at his house he saw a book about China. Hudson asked if he could borrow the book and the pastor asked, why would you want a book about China? I'm going to China to serve God. The pastor kind of laughed it off. So how are you going to do that? Where are you going to get the money to go to China? And what are you going to do when you get there? Hudson didn't have any of the answers to his questions. Hudson was still a teenager and he got a job with a Christian doctor. He began to learn everything he could. He began to learn to read Chinese. One night he was laying in bed and he thought, in China, they won't have nice beds like this. So he got up and he slept on the floor. I had to be prepared for the harsh life that I will face in China. Then Hudson met a beautiful music teacher. He fell in love right away. She liked him as well. He talked to her all the time about his plans to move to China. She would ask him, well, what will the servants be like when I'm in China? And will I have a nice house if we go to China? Hudson was concerned that she didn't really understand what missions was like. Still, he loved her, and so he asked her to marry him. The girl's father told Hudson, I will let you marry my daughter. You're studying to be a doctor, and that's good. But you have to promise you will not move to China. The young lady agreed. She wanted to marry Hudson, but China was a no. So Hudson had to end his relationship with the young lady. He found this the hardest thing God asked him to give up. He loved her, and he didn't want to leave for China alone. Things only got worse for Hudson. He continued to witness in the streets. Men would take his papers and rip them up and knock him around. On top of that, the doctor he worked for was always forgetting to pay him. One day, a man came and asked Hudson to come and help his wife. Hudson entered their small apartment, and it was clear the family had nothing. The man, his wife, and his child were starving to death. He could tell just by looking at them. Hudson gave the woman some medicine and, and prayed for her to recover. The whole time Hudson was in the apartment, all he could think about was the money that was in his pocket. It was all that Hudson had left. He was actually on his way to go out and buy food for himself when the man had stopped him. He couldn't give it away. It was literally everything he had. As Hudson prayed for the lady, he knew he had to do more. He reached into his pocket and he gave the father all the money he had. The man's face lit up. He would be able to feed his family. That night, Hudson went home to a house with no food and no way to buy food. As he arrived home, there was a package waiting for him. Inside was a pair of new gloves. And as he put the gloves on, he found out inside one of the gloves was money. Four times the amount he had just given away. Many times the doctor forgot to pay Hudson. And every time Hudson prayed, God provided. And during this time, Hudson kept learning the Bible and studying Chinese. Then one day, Hudson was working on a patient who was dying. And Hudson caught the disease. He became very sick. The doctor told Hudson, I'm sorry, but you're not going to make it. You're going to die. Hudson told the doctor, relax, don't freak out. He wasn't going to die. God had called him to China, and God had plans for him in China. A few weeks later, Hudson was completely better. At the age of 21, Hudson felt ready to leave for China. It would take five months by boat to arrive in China, and he would not see or hear from his family for many years. You know, I wonder what Hudson would think about our lives today. Today, I looked up the cost for a plane ticket to China. I could get one for a good deal for $853, and it would really just take hours to fly to China. And we have social media, FaceTime, all to keep in touch with our family. I wonder if Hudson would be surprised at how easy it would be today for missionaries, and yet how few missionaries there are. The five-month trip was not easy for Hudson Taylor. There was a storm that almost ripped the boat in half, and there was another time when there was no wind at all. And without wind, there was no way to steer the boat. Suddenly, large rocks appeared ahead, and there was nothing that could be done to stop the boat from crashing into the rocks. Hudson told all the men to go into their rooms and pray. Then Hudson told the captain to raise the sail. The captain thought he was crazy. Why would we raise the sail? There's no wind. But he agreed. And as the sail went up, a gust of wind came and the boat turned just in time to avoid the rocks. 
Finally, after five long months, Hudson arrived in China. They landed and found themselves in the middle of a civil war. Hudson found a place to live among other missionaries on the coastal areas, and he began to learn how to speak Chinese. It wasn't just the Civil War that was a problem. Hudson did not get along well with the other missionaries. He was shocked to find that their missionary work was aimed at other British people in China. They were in China, but they weren't reaching anybody who was Chinese. See, there was other British people in China, a lot of businessmen, and the coastal areas were actually becoming very similar to England. They could live almost the same as they did in England. The missionaries were doing more work to colonize China than to preach Jesus. The churches were growing, but with English men and women. Hudson wanted to leave the coastal areas and go into the inner parts of China, the areas that were poor. The other missionaries discouraged this. Hudson finally felt that he had learned enough Chinese to speak to people, so he bought a houseboat and began to travel down rivers from city to city, preaching the name of Jesus. People did not respond. Hudson handed out Bibles to people, but no one was listening to him. He felt so lonely. One day, Hudson and his friends were preaching and a crowd grew. They began to beat Hudson and his friend. They pulled them until Hudson thought that he would be pulled right in half. The crowd knocked him to the ground and then dragged them to the Mandarin. Both men thought they were going to die. The Mandarin asked what they were teaching. Hudson stood slowly, caught his breath. He had to lean against the wall for support, and then he preached. The Mandarin did not sentence them to death, but instead told them they could go ahead and preach, and then offered his soldiers for protection. One day, Hudson had a sudden thought. What if he was in Great Britain, and a man dressed like these Chinese men came towards him with a strange book? Would he have taken it? Hudson realized he needed to blend in. He said, we have to be as Chinese as we can be without sinning. He adapted every part of their culture that did not go against God's word. He never took part in any culture that would go against biblical principles. But Hudson dyed his hair black. He grew it out and then shaved the top of his head. He wore the clothes and ate the food and lived in the same houses as the Chinese. Hudson ended up moving into the village where the Mandarin had let him preach. He set up a doctor's office and a clinic. He worked all day, helping around 200 patients a day, and then at night, preaching. But then the other doctors in the town, they got really angry. They went to the Mandarin and convinced the Mandarin to kick Hudson out of town. Hudson sadly was forced to leave. Hudson moved to another town, set up a doctor's office, and also a school for boys. Down the road was a school for girls. A teacher named Maria was running the school. One day, Maria and her friend came to visit Hudson. Hudson wanted to serve Maria a nice meal, but he had no food left and he had no money left. He really wanted to impress Maria, but what could he do? He prayed and then he asked God for help. As he was praying, a boy came by with a letter, mailed two days early, and in the letter was money. Hudson ran to the store and bought food, and he was able to make a nice meal for Maria. But Hudson realized he needed to be honest with Maria. He was very poor, and he trusted God for everything. Maria didn't run. She said her father had died many years ago, and God had taken care of her all these years. She knew that wasn't going to change. A few weeks later, Maria and Hudson were married. The days were very full. Two schools, a doctor's clinic, and every night Hudson preaching. One day, a man named Mr. Nee was walking by the house and heard some speaking. Mr. Nee was a leader in the temple. He worshipped the idols, and he would get angry if he found people not worshipping the idols. Some were worried when they saw Mr. Nye come in and begin to listen to Hudson preach. After Hudson was finished, Mr. Nye said, I have been traveling all around China, trying to find a way to have my sins forgiven. This is what I've been looking for. That night, Mr. Nye became a Christian. Then he asked Hudson, how long have your people known about this Jesus? For hundreds of years, Hudson said. What? Why did you wait so long to come and tell us? My father died. He didn't know. He didn't know. A little while later, the home and school and clinic was raided and everything was stolen. The incident became kind of a crisis in the town. The Chinese blamed the British for trying to colonize them. The British blamed Hudson 
I mean, they hadn't had any problems until he left the coastal areas and moved inland. News of all this reached all the way to Great Britain. The churches in Great Britain heard Hudson was now living like a Chinese, and he wasn't listening to the advice of the other missionaries, and his attitude had actually caused problems. So the church cut off their funding. Back in China, Hudson was called to the kitchen. He had no food left. The hospital had patients that needed to be fed. His school had students that needed to be fed. There was no money and no food. Hudson prayed. As he was praying, a letter arrived from a man named George Mueller. George Mueller was a man in Great Britain who had an orphanage. Many times there was no food or money for the orphans, but every night Mueller would pray for hours and God always provided. Over the last few nights, he'd heard God tell him to send money to Hudson, not just once, but every week. It was enough money to keep the hospital and the school open. Things got even harder for Hudson. Five of Hudson's children died, two as soon as they were born, and three more before they turned 10 years old. Then Hudson got sick. The stress of everything became too much for him. He decided he had to go back to Great Britain for a break. Hudson, Maria, and her children got in a boat and took a five-month-long trip back to Great Britain. While Hudson was recovering in Great Britain, he spoke in churches. He would pray for them over the map of China. He knew he could not reach all of China by himself. He began to pray that God would send 70 missionaries. Soon, 78 missionaries were signed up. Hudson prayed for 100 more. Then 102 were signed up. Hudson prayed for 1,000. 1,153 signed up. Hudson was able to return to China and continue his work. He had more help and more money. But then Maria got sick, and she passed away. Now Hudson was alone, with children to raise, schools to run, and hospitals to run. One day, Hudson was traveling with a man named Peter. Hudson heard a splash, and he ran to go see what, that Peter had fallen into the water. Hudson jumped in to save him, but he couldn't find him. There's fishing boats nearby, so Hudson yelled for the fishermen, Please, come and help me. They yelled back that they were too busy. Hudson said, Please, I need you. I need you to help me find him. How much money will you give me? Hudson said, I, I only have a few dollars. That's not enough. It's not worth it. Hudson kept yelling for help. Finally, the fishermen threw their nets into the water and found Peter's body. It was too late. He was dead. Hudson found this very hard to deal with. But as he buried Peter's body, he thought of the churches he had spoken in. Please come to China and help me reach the Chinese. We're too busy. We have jobs to do. How much money would you give us? Oh, that's it. That is not enough. At the age of 73, in 1905, Hudson asked his son to take him to a town. It was the most hostile area in China. He had heard God tell him he would not die until that town had received the good news of Jesus. Hudson arrived. He met missionaries there. He heard the stories of people who had received Jesus. He spoke to those who had become Christians. That night, he went to bed and went home to be with Jesus. After 51 years, China Hudson died at the age of 73. He was famous for saying, God's work, done God's way, will never lack God's supply. Hudson started 125 schools. He had personally led over 25,000 Chinese people to the Lord. Hudson started a missionary organization called China Inland Missions. When he died, it was the largest mission organization in the world in just 51 years. What are your plans for the next 51 years? In 1949, the communist government in China ordered the execution of every missionary. They were rounded up and beheaded, men, women, and children. The few that escaped fled China. The communist government and also the Western world thought this would be the end of the church in China. But the Chinese continued the church as an underground movement. Today, around 90 million Christians are in China. And it is estimated that in a few years, there will be more Christians in China than any other country in the world. In 1980, Hudson's great-grandson stood in a museum in China with his family. He stood next to the monument of his great-grandfather, and he prayed, God, raise up a man like my great-grandfather. 
God answered that prayer. His son, also named Hudson Taylor, felt God call him to China. Today, Hudson Taylor, the great-great-grandson of Hudson Taylor, is a missionary in China. Hudson Taylor said God has three stages, impossible, difficult, done. What is God calling you to do? Is it impossible? Don't worry, that's just stage one. God, today, let someone listening to this podcast feel your calling. Send your Holy Spirit to open our hearts. Call a generation to rise up and take your good news wherever you've called them to go. Give them courage to follow you. I'm Laura Lee Siemens, and this is...